Thank you. The next item of business is consideration of business motion 11828 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau setting a timetable for the stage three consideration of the Food Scotland Bill. Any member who wishes to speak against the motion should press the request to speak button now and I call on Joe Fitzpatrick to move motion number 11828. Moved. No member has asked to speak against the motion, therefore I now put the question to the Chamber. The question is that motion number 11828, in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick, be agreed to. Are we all agreed? The next item of business is consideration of business motion 11831, in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick, on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau, setting a revision to the business programme for today. Any member who wishes to speak against the motion should press the request to speak button now. And I call on Joe Fitzpatrick to move motion number 11831. No member is asked to speak against the motion, therefore I now put the question to the Chamber. The question is that motion number 11831, in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick, be agreed to. Are we all agreed? The motion is therefore agreed to. We now move to topical questions. Question number one, Jim Hume. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what it is doing to support hospital emergency departments in light of reports of increased waiting times and concerns that GP closures over the festive period will exacerbate this situation. Cabinet Secretary Shonis Robertson. Every year, NHS boards and their partners develop robust plans for winter. The winter planning guidance for NHS boards issued in September has a specific focus on the two four-day festive holidays. We have invested over £18 million this year to support health boards to improve the way emergency care operates within hospitals and to address delayed discharges, particularly over the winter months. This investment will provide increased nursing staff, staffing over the winter period, increased uh, emergency ambulatory care capacity to reduce unnecessary hospital admissions and increased consultant presence at weekends. Additionally, NHS 24 has received additional resources to answer calls over the festive period. It plays a key role in facilitating access to NHS board out of hours GP services, which each year are available throughout the festive period. The NHS 24 free phone 111 number will often be the best first port of call for anyone with health concerns this festive period. Jim Hume. Uh, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for, for the answer. And uh, can I just say at the outset that the, this is not about uh, the, the outstanding work of those in our NHS. They have our full support, but I'm not really comforted by the Minister's response. This year, more than 100,000 patients uh, waited for more than four hours in A&E departments. In the 12 weeks to the end of September, nearly 2,000 patients had to wait over eight hours. That's more than twice as many as last year. Uh, winter's knocking at the door, which will only exacerbate the situation. So I wonder what the Scottish Government will do in this next week to work with NHS boards uh, with this new information to ensure that already struggling emergency departments are able to cope throughout this winter. Of course, uh, it's quite right that we pay tribute to the outstanding work of the, the staff within our uh, health service. Uh, winter always brings challenges and they, they do a fantastic job uh, to, to overcome those challenges. Can I say to, to Jim Hume, uh, we have absolutely been working with uh, local boards to make sure that their winter plans are robust. That is an ongoing conversation and I again have been asking uh, the boards to test their plans to make sure that they have the capacity uh, to cope with winter pressures. Of course they are used to doing that every year. They will staff up, they will make sure that they have resilience uh, within their plans to cope with winter and uh, this year is no different from that other than of course we have the two four day festive holidays and that's why there's been particular focus on making sure that they uh, are absolutely prepared. There is an important message to the public in all of this as well, which is why NHS 24 has been running the Be Healthwise This Winter campaign, which is at, uh, advising people to uh, not just stock up on the usual remedies uh, and to ensure they have their repeat prescriptions, but importantly to know where to turn if they are ill and of course NHS 24 opens the door to out of hours GP services and all of the, the services that that person should require. So I think it's important that we all collectively send a message to the public that NHS 24 should be their first port of call. Jim Hume. 
the Cabinet Secretary again for that. The BMA has said that there is a weekly crisis around a and &E departments and GP out of our services. Six years ago, this Government said it would reduce pressure on emergency departments by improving primary services for minor ailments. But the numbers attending a and &E &I, &E are higher than ever. That's 198 per hour. The system is in crisis after seven years of this Government. With that in mind, and this trend that is uh, increasing, what is the Scottish Government proposing to reverse this trend in increasing a &E visits, given that the work to date has not uh, really been adequate? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I could remind Jim Hume about the uh, number of delayed discharges and pressures on a &E that uh, were in place uh, in, before 2007, but I think uh, I'll move on to talk about what we have done and the considerable work that has gone in, the £50 million investment in unscheduled care, absolutely to uh, make sure that there are systems in place that avoid people turning up at A&E in the first place. So a lot of work going on within the community to avoid admissions in the first place, particularly vulnerable elderly people and making sure that where possible they can be treated either at home or in other settings. Making sure that we have step up, step down facilities to get people out of acute beds as quickly as possible. But importantly, again, to avoid people ne needing to go in in the first place by giving uh, a, a different place to go where rehabilitation and support uh, can be given. Uh, all of these things are important and that's why all of these measures are being taken forward as well as the top priority I've given to delayed discharge because one of the challenges that Jim Hume himself um, alluded to in terms of uh, people coming through a and &E in a, a quick and speedy fashion is, of course, the availability of beds within the system. And delayed discharge is having a huge impact on that, which is why it is a top priority with investment going in, not just to deal with delayed discharge this winter, which we will have to do to, to alleviate pressure on the system, but importantly, to actually tackle delayed discharge out of the system once and for all. And that is my commitment going forward over the next few months. NHS Lothian is already uh, struggling to recover from the past waiting times scandal. Now we see in the evening news that there is a £70 million funding gap described by a senior board member as a very dire picture. Given concerns about increased waiting times and GP closures over the festive period, what assistance and advice can the Cabinet Secretary offer to patients concerned about the impact of the budget crisis in NHS Lothian and its impact on patients? Cabinet Secretary. Well, uh, first of all, the assurance to patients will be that uh, NHS Lothian will manage their financial processes through in the way that other boards do and will get into financial balance by the end of the year. And of course, boards are getting a real terms increase uh, in, their, in their uplift um, and we'll get that in going into next financial year. Of course, the member uh, just last week was calling for money to go into social care. So uh, one week they're calling for money to go into social care, and then a week later they're calling for the same money to be magicked up and spent again in the health service. We have already committed, as he would uh, have noticed had he seen my colleague here, John Swinney, announce that the consequentials uh, from the autumn statement will all be going to health. Again, something that the member uh, has refused as a health spokesperson to confirm himself. So I, I don't underestimate the challenges facing the health service and we are absolutely determined to tackle them. I won't, though, take any lectures from the member opposite on these matters. Mr Findlay, you must stop heckling across the chamber. Question number two, Dave Thompson. No. Sorry, Dave Thompson. Yeah, the microphone is not working. Uh, it's come on. It's OK. There we are. Yeah, yeah. ah, Sorry about that. that. Well, it's not my fault anyway. <laughs> to ask the Scottish Government... One moment, Mr Thompson. Could you sit down, please? Mr Findlay, I have already warned you about heckling. Will you... Mr Hindley, Findlay, will you stop arguing with me? I've already warned you about heckling. Will you please desist and behave yourself? Mr Thompson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government how it will ensure that <coughs> disruption as a result of cold weather this week is kept to a minimum. Cabinet Secretary John Swinney. 
Officer, the current weather situation um, is that there is a windy and unsettled week ahead of us, with many areas of the country experiencing their first snowfall of the season. While this weather is not unusual in Scotland this time of year, it is necessary to prepare accordingly. Plans are already in place and all responders are working together to this objective. Gritters have been active in supporting the, um, the, the essential uh, work that is required on the Trunk Road network. In addition, the Resilience Division has convened a meeting of our resilience partners from across Scotland this afternoon. And later today, there will be a ministerial um, resilience uh, call uh, to discuss the preparations. The Scottish Government's resilience response has been activated, along with the Transport Scotland multi-agency response team to oversee the coordinated efforts of responders and local partnerships. On Sunday, the Transport Minister observed gritting pr uh, preparations in the west of Scotland, and earlier today I visited the new Transport Scotland control centre in South Queensferry, where I saw the extensive arrangements in place to keep the country moving and to provide the best possible advice to members of the public. Dave Thompson. I uh, thank the Deputy First Minister for his answer. Uh, one of the challenges in previous winters has been the availability of salt. I wonder if the, if the Deputy First Minister can reassure people that stock levels this year are appropriate, and is there any way that motorists can get information on where the gritters will be and when? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Presiding Officer, the stock uh, supplies in Scotland at the 1st of December 2014 was 639,120 tonnes, uh, which includes 90,000 of tonnes in the Strategic Salt Reserve. This is almost double the stock that was used last winter and is as much as was used in the severe weather um, in 2010-11, which was a particular challenge to our resilience operations at that time. Um, the information on gritting operations that are undertaken on the Trunk Road network um, is visible in real time on the, um, tra the Traffic Scotland website. Um, that information is available um, and updated on a daily basis, uh, so members of the public can access that information and it, it, it indicates the routes that are being supported. And there are, of course, also backup arrangements whereby um, additional gritting services can be deployed if there are uh, urgent circumstances that materialise. Mr Thompson. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, Highland Council is planning to leave secondary roads with little traffic uh, unsalted in the early morning, as the salt does not work unless it is driven on. I just wonder if the Cabinet Secretary uh, would agree that this is something worth considering. Cabinet Secretary. Obviously, the, the judgments have to be arrived at, at local level by individual authorities who will have to take into account particular circumstances in their own localities, uh, given the fact that um, the conditions can vary quite dramatically from area to area. Um, I think this is best. Uh, obviously, we take a, a, a proactive approach on the Trunk Road Network. Um, the gritting operations are well advertised on the Traffic Scotland website but individual local authorities will come to appropriate conclusions depending on the circumstances in their locality. Alex Jones. In the particularly cold period we were enduring exactly four years ago just now, there was considerable disruption on the railways as a result of frozen points. We were told at the time that there was a programme in place to uh, electrically heat points in future. Are we aware at this stage as to whether that programme is completed and whether we can avoid that problem should we suffer cold weather in a similar vein? There has been a whole series of incremental steps taken to ensure that that has taken place. Um, the, uh, the, the rail network has been upgraded to ensure we have greater resilience on these questions. Uh, but obviously, Mr Johnson will appreciate, given the extremity of temperatures that were experienced four years ago, um, the circumstances we certainly uh, believe that we will face in the course of the next seven days will not mirror temperatures, anything of that order whatsoever. Um, uh, so there is greater resilience, but the process is an incremental one, which will take some time to be completed. Thank you. Uh, that ends topical questions. The next item of business is stage three proceedings on the Food Scotland Bill. In dealing with the amendments members should have, the Bill is amended at stage two, that is SP Bill 48A.